Hi everybody, this is Diane. I've been working today and some I did some last night on ephemera pieces for this professional's journal and this was in yesterday's video where I talked about the items that I'm using, the digital and the book pages, and I talked about my plans for the ephemera. Um, and I had some of the possible elements and images pulled and some I had to search for. So I've done some of that and I'm just going to take you through and show you what uh, ephemera I have made so far and we're going to make a little bit more. We did this goldsmith one yesterday so I won't go back into that one. Uh, here we have the flower cellar and I just glued flower images on both sides because she's folded over there. So just glued some flower images down. Some things I try, I'm trying to keep flat so we don't bulk it up too much. Now I, I'm not planning on adding elements for all of the book pages, especially if they're faced with a page like this, but this is the glove page and I have a lot of really cool vintage glove images, so I think I will make something for that. I've stamped on the plain pages. Yesterday we did the Tinsmith. This is an uh, embossed image. Um, this is called tin plate or tin tile. So it looks like a tin tile ceiling. And that's just a little tin picture that I got out of a collector's book. And this is the glass and lens merchant. So these are glass bottles that I cut out of a book. They were black and white and I painted them and added this vintage um, optometrist lens. And then I wanted to include this beautiful glass image from a little book from the Corning Glass Museum. And this is a piece of Steuben glass. And then I needed, I made it into a pocket. I showed you the image yesterday, but I hadn't made it into a pocket yet. And so I needed something to put into the pocket. And I had this image from an old magazine of showing these, uh, the water pitcher and the glass tumblers. So that is a tag and I will put something there. I haven't put things in the tags, tabs, except for that piece there. I showed you this image. This is from an old magazine and this is the lady that sells oranges. So I trimmed what I had to trim off of this image and glued it to some citrus uh, green scrapbook paper and made a little pocket so I'll have to make something to put in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And here we have the man that sells musical instruments so I put a couple instruments there. This one could be a little tuck spot. This one is just glued down. Um, I did this one on the video yesterday, the utensil maker. So we have some spoons, but this one, I didn't have an image available to me, so I had to search. This is the sculptor, and I happened to find this um, photograph of a Degas ballerina um, statue. So I just had to trim it to fit, and I stamped one of these uh, Tim Holtz fragments stamps onto the background. It's a subtle background. And this one is the locksmith. So I stamped some keys on the background. And this is a piece of chipboard that's shaped like a lock. And I got this in a Happy Mail a long time ago. And I painted it with copper paint and then rubbed some vintage photo distress paint on it. And then I just rubbed a little bit of stays on black ink over it. And this is a genuine vintage lock plate that I got at a flea market. It's not very heavy, it's very lightweight, so I thought it would be it would work well on there. And I edged the tag with some of that copper paint. Okay, so that brings us to the second signature. And I already showed and talked about this pocket, but I had a plain white card in there and I hadn't done anything with it yet. Well, I found this piece of um, grape, 
grape image, and it's from a Victorian scrapbook. I don't think I have the original piece anymore. I sold some of the Victorian pieces, so that might have been in the in a bunch that I sold. But I had this in a digital, I think, because I had a copy of it <clears throat> in my stash. But it's just this little bunch of grapes on this white card. So I needed to do something to make the card look pretty. So I took one of the Tim Holtz Fragments stamps and stamped it in um, Archival Ink Thistle is the name of the color. And I stenciled with um, one of the Tim Holtz Distress Inks in purple and then stamped some journaling lines. And then I made a tab by um, stamping that same pattern onto that and rubbing different colors onto it. And I distressed the back a bit. And I really like the way that card turned out. So I'm very pleased that I had no idea what I was going to do to put a card in there. And I really like what came of it. I've got some shoes. I pulled some vintage shoe images that I can use, hopefully in today's video. So nothing, I don't think I have anything else that I accomplished. Except that I did sew all of the cards to the pages. Had I done that yesterday? I don't remember. Oh, I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. So, and I need to make something to go in there. So I don't think I have anything else. I just have the things pulled. So let's go back. This one is done for today. Let's take this signature and see what needs to be worked on. Well, we come right to the shoes. So that's a lady that sells shoes. And I need to make an ephemera piece for here and here. And I happen to have a 1912 magazine or catalog that I had. I made digitals out of these and I still have, these are all originals right here. Do I have any others? This is one of the digital prints. And so is that. Okay, that's what I have for shoes. So we just have to determine what we're going to do here. I love this. I'm thinking that I'll just make a couple of tuck spots. Um, one with a more serviceable. It says very dressy, I guess, but this one looks prettier to me. It's a pump instead of a boot. So I'm going to use two different types of shoes to make tuck spots. I did bring my little, well, not so little, box of cardstock scraps. So I need to look at the colors here. I have blues and reds and tans. I... I'll look for something blue to back this with. That will work. Now, how big do I want to make that tuck spot? I'll put a bit of a border around it. Um, I will probably want to sew the image to the cardstock. Maybe I shouldn't because this is a pretty old paper. Probably shouldn't perforate it with my sewing machine. Somebody's doing some work out there. I don't know if you can hear it. It's probably not as loud to you as it is to me. I didn't feel like coming in here and working today, but when I got started, I started having fun again. <laughs> and 
I just I get curious to see how things are going to turn out. So it's fun. what I was looking for. I was looking for a corner punch. Then I can use some of my other shoe images to make tags or cards to go in these little tuck spots. this in there. And I have these two images. I could just fold that up and tuck it in there. Or I guess it doesn't need to be folded. I can just trim a little off the ends. Or should I use this one? Because these shoes match that one a little better. just need something to put this shoe on. change my blade. Round the corners on this. And we have to do some inking.
So I hope that this book doesn't end up looking too, as I said yesterday, um, cluttered and I can't remember the other word I used, but like it doesn't go together because of all of the different merchants and their different wares. I'm trying to be careful not to make it look um, well I can't think of words today I want it to look classy and whimsical at the same time is that a possibility I think so I think I've done that before I'm just going to use this larger uh, fragments piece to stamp a background, but not with that ink. I want to use crumb cake from Stampin' Up. journal on the back. Or I can. I still haven't decided if I'm going to keep this or sell it. probably attach some sort of ribbon or lace to the top or a little tab or something. That turned out cute. And it looks cute with that stamping poking out there. If you like these shoes, I have digitals of these in my shop. This one is a digital. All the other ones are the real thing. But I do have digital versions of them in my shop. Got the shoes done. I did not look for anything for the tableware or the lamp maker yet. Oh, I didn't actually look for vegetable images either. I have gloves and weren't the gloves in the first book? The first signature. I got gloves and uh, feathers, the plume, plume maker or whatever to work on today. Yeah, there's the gloves. All right, so that's an original. And that's an original. I love that image. And this is a copy. And these came out of a fashion book. And these are, some of these are kind of big images and I really didn't want to cover up a lot of this. So I think what I might do <clears throat> is make something that I can clip to the edge and it can be removed and then you can write on that. Because I love this one. 
but I think I'll save that and make that a pocket in a book. a pretty little tuck spot. And again, I will have pockets made with the gloves and I can use another glove image to put into the pocket, allowing me to use more of these wonderful images. There's a wig lady on these book pages, a wig seller, and I actually found these vintage, not that, these vintage hair goods advertisements. <laughs> I think I'll just keep that simple. Um, let's see. I might want to stamp a little something on that card. Like the flower. What does this say? That's paint. Arts, artist supplies, ready-made clothing, hats, caps, repairs receive constant attention. Um, guaranteed to be strictly high grade. Do that or that. Oh, I was thinking of using one of these light bulb stamps for the lamp maker. I'll have to look at the picture of the lamp maker more closely. these receipt things. Guess I have all kinds of possibilities here. Makes the piece a little more interesting because it had all that white space. It's 
So I'll just glue this on as a tuck spot. These gloves are in the hats and accessories bundle in my shop. This piece of manila file folder. I made a two inch spine for the book cover, so I hope it's going to be enough after I put all these things in. It might be a more of a gator mouth than I like to do, but I'm having fun making all these ephemera pieces, so we're sticking with it. This paper from the magazine is thin. You can see dresses that are on the back side of that glove page. I don't know if I will put anything on the on the back side. So let's move on back in the direction we were going. I can go always go back and add more gloves if I want to. And I yeah, I already did add something to the inside. <clears throat> Shoes. Stamp something there. both of those sides. I'll come back to the tableware merchant and the lamb maker lamp maker. I'll have to come back to the vegetables. There's wigs. Maybe I'll just flip this around and we'll do wigs and not vegetables because I think that would make it look more cohesive if I stick with the, veg uh, the wigs instead of the vegetables. So I have these two pieces which don't have to be a pocket. They could just be, yeah, I'm just going to glue them down like I did with the musical instruments.
I am aging old paper. This is already very old paper. So I probably don't even need to do this. tiny tear right there so I'm gonna put this up here I'm glad I found them when I was looking for the gloves and stuff. Well, I'm not sure if I have the order right. Because I've got copy dyed paper in between two digital papers. Let me see what I did here. Copy dyed paper, yep, in between two digitals. So I stamped on all four pages. This is umbrellas. I'm going to have to look for umbrellas. <clears throat> the wares maker and the wine maker. So I have these for wares, but I didn't fussy cut them. I'll just use this one. I hope you're crafting with me. Do you have something to do in the silences? When I took speech class in school, high school, we were told to, you know, uh, if we were doing a um, demonstration type of speech to fill the 
silences. Don't have silences. So, for my demonstration, I chose to make cookies. <laughs> and I made oatmeal cookies. And I had made them at home the day before. So I had some to hand out. But I just showed how I mixed it. And I talked about all the things my mother or my home ec teacher had taught about after you put the flour in, don't stir it too fast, you're going to throw flour everywhere. Just anything I could think of. Pack the brown sugar when you measure it. And, you know, how to measure all that stuff. I was giving instructional tidbits while I was stirring and measuring and stuff so I didn't have silences. I got a very good grade on that demonstration speech and my classmates enjoyed the cookies. I was going to, no, I don't need to stamp a background on all of them, but I like that tableware image. And then we have the winemaker. I'm going to have to, there's another, there's so many great things. There was a wine grower and a winemaker, and I don't have a lot of grapey images, so I don't know what I'll do with that yet. But I figured the other one out. I'm sure I'll figure this one out. The blacksmith. some iron pieces. Oh, I had them stuck in the book. There's some iron weather vanes. I had some like iron door handles. I'm not sure where that page went. <coughs> oh, sorry. glad I had all of these books on collectibles and furnishings and because I love these images. Oh, I don't know what happened to that. Oh, there it is. So maybe I should do an iron weather vane. Oh, I don't have a tag in there either. I have a bunch of these tags that I copy dyed a while ago. When you copy dye them, it loosens the glue on the reinforcement, so you usually have to re-glue that once you take the string out. Or replace them, but it stains the cardstock. Okay, now instead of fussy cutting a weather vane, maybe I will use a punch. This one is one and a quarter. Let me see if I have one that's slightly bigger. <clears throat> I have one that's two inches. That's probably too big. square. Oh, that pig was attached to that one. Let's 
See the sheep is attached to this one. Some of these are kind of hard. So I think the most time consuming thing about this book is finding and deciding on all of the very eclectic elements, images that are going to go in these books or this book. And of course figuring out what to do with them after I decide on one. I want to have three images. And just put a little ink on them. Oh, you know what? This tag is not going to be that tall. I've got to cut it down. Now let's see what we can do with it. I might just have two images on it. I really like that north, south, east, west thing, but I'm not sure if I like the scallop. I put it on right side up. This one I do want to make sure I stamp something for the background.
I guess I'll have to finish making my ephemera all by myself because I am out of time here. Maybe I can show you the things I pulled for the plume maker though before I go. I don't know which one I'm going to choose. I don't know how much room I have. Okay, I think that might finish up. Yep, that finishes that one. So there is a plume maker in the third signature, and I found these images from that old catalog of hats with big feathers. This is the original, and this is a digital. So maybe one of those, and then I have this from a periodical from the 1800s. So I'm sure I will hopefully be able to use one of those. Let me see how much room I have. Where's my plume maker? I hope the camera doesn't shut off. Toolmaker, fisherman. Perfumer, musician. Oh, I've got to do more music ones. There it is, the plume master. So instead of these feather stickers, I just have one little tag to do. I might have to do something on that page again. Because these images might all be too big for this. That's the original. So the printable would be smaller. These are all originals. I might have to print another page of these so I can get a smaller image. She might work though. Yeah, maybe I'll use her. Yeah, we'll go with her. Then I can use maybe something like this on the opposite page because I mean got to use that peacock feather right and look at that one that's fabulous so maybe I'll and I mean that is just full of plumes so I've got to use some of those all right I'm gonna go before my camera shuts off I hope that you're enjoying watching uh, me <laughs> try to figure out how to um, reference each of these various merchants and crafts people I'm having fun with it. I hope you are having fun watching it. I will see you in the next video, and I hope you have a creative day today. Bye-bye.